Um, hi and welcome to Talks at Google. Um, my name is Nathan Rogers and today I have the pleasure of introducing one of my best friends, um, Rose McAleese, uh, to give a talk today. So without further ado, here is Rose. Um, hi, my name is Rose McAleese. Uh, I'm a poet from Seattle, Washington. Um, I'm just going to jump into it. Mm -hmm. You want to divorce me. Fine. You wish to divorce me. <laughs> you silly crow, wingspan too short of raven, you foolish king, if it was not for me, you would have no hunger for demise or conquer. Crave the flesh of another. I, your lady, no chambermaid, rest assured in barren bed for you, sit waiting past midnight's croning moan. Your robes are washed daily by these hands. Stone, cold water, rinse. Make absence of any bloodshed. I, your wife, clean up all your messes. You play no judgment on such rash decisions as these. No marks are made in your honor of this. Divorce? You've wandered too far, my dear. Coward. I'm calling you for coward. Coward. No hollow. No backbone to aspire. Where will you go, sire? <laughs> oh, Macbeth. Such childish quarrels as these push us back in our demand. Who will shine your blade? Iron the wrinkles out of your half-hearted strategy. It is the queen who makes all the moves. My scenarios unravel like chess, and you are just a pawn. Oh, my worship, you are just a wooden pawn. Names of former lovers hang over the mantelpiece that is my heart. Men not worthy of royals. You are lucky not to be sacrificed. I saw spark in your potential, flint in the sense of you being my lord. Now, I know the women here back their husbands are victim to naive and God smack, but I, I play shadow. I'm stitched closely to your heels because I, Lady Macbeth, Make every dagger a happy one. Bash the ridiculous notion of failure. One must steal if one is not given. I vow no sleep will be lost over this. And I know from experience all bloodshed can easily be washed away. Thanks. Oh, there's water. OK, so I like doing that one first because it gets the nerves out and it scares people. So then I can like win you back over as the talk goes. Mm. So like I said, um, I'm a poet, a spoken word poet from Seattle, Washington. Uh, a little back history about myself. Uh, I started doing poetry because when I was in seventh grade, I had a great teacher by the name of Miss Chestnut. She realized that I like was a rebel without a cause. Like I really tried to be a, a bad, I can't cuss a bad butt, but I couldn't be because I was just like, I had no reason to be mad. Um, so of course, when you have no reason to be mad and you're seven years old, you start writing poetry. And that's pretty much kind of where I started. And then I became a spoken word artist slowly over time. And then as time progressed, I realized that I really loved teaching. And so I started uh, being a teaching artist, which is kind of what I do now. Um, and then I guess, God, and maybe two, almost two years ago, I got my first book published. You can like buy it now. You can buy it here later, which is exciting. It's really weird to be like, I have a published book. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just kind of been a poet and everything and whatnot. I was super nervous about this talk for like, for some weird reason. I was like watching all the other Google Talks, and I've noticed that like, you know, there's people like Tina Fey and like Lady Gaga who've all been here. And so it was like, OK, like I'm neither of those people. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. So my father, God bless his soul, he's not dead. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> he's, he's alive and well. Anyways, my father told me, start talking about what you love and how passionate you are. People will be able to read that. And then whenever I get nervous, I'm just going to jump into a poem. So if I start doing something or anything, it's just, just go with it, OK? Um, so, like I said, I'm a teaching artist, and that poem I just did was a persona poem about Lady Macbeth. I'm a huge Shakespeare nerd. I fell in love with Shakespeare when I was about 13 years old, which was kind of disturbing to my parents, but they were just like, whatever, at least she's reading. Let, let her be all mournful and semi-teenage angst depressed or whatever it was. So I started doing that, and then I got into acting and realized that poetry and spoken word is basically like acting, but you get to write your own lines. Um, so I started becoming a teaching artist, and in schools, uh, it's really hard to teach middle schoolers and high school kids 
poetry. You know, they're like, what do I need to know about a dead white guy, pretty much, um, which is true, but also you can make it your own and revamp it. You know, thank God for people like Jack Kerouac, you know, and, you know, Angela Davis and all these people who've kind of like reinvented it and made it their own and everything, which is so much fun with slam poetry because it's a mixture of beatniks, hip hop, rap, and all that jazz. Um, so that poem was written from a writing prompt that I came up with my kids where I asked them to take a fictional character from either a movie, a play, or a book, and they had to write a monologue to get on a reality TV show. So that was Lady Beth's monologue to get on the Bad Girls Club. I don't know if you guys know the Bad Girls Club, but it's the show on Oxygen Channel. Oh my God, you need to watch the Bad Girls Club. It is the best piece of feminism. Just kidding, it's not. It's this, basically they just play, take a bunch of girls, put them in a house with alcohol and daddy issues, and just let them roam the world, and they fight each other. So let's be honest, Lady Macbeth would make it on that show, and she'd be great. Um, you should watch it. It's such a great guilty pleasure. Um, what else? Uh, so yeah, that's one of the pieces I did, and it's also in my book, which I have. I want to show it. Where is it? I want to get it. Sorry, I should have had my props ready. I'm running off screen. This is going to be crazy. This is cr I still can't get over this. Like, I first got it in my house one day, and there it was. And some guy named Tom Robbins wrote it, read it, and liked it. And so did Rachel McKibbins and uh, Karen Frenny Frock. Um, I'm going to read one more piece from this book. I'll read a bunch of pieces, but... Um, I really like this piece. So I grew up with a very, I, oh, someone walking in, hi. Um, I grew up with a very, very Irish father, um, super Irish. Uh, also, fun fact about this book, I wrote it when I was single. Um, don't, can't believe that I have a boyfriend now because if you read this book, you would be like, why would you date her? So, sorry for the guy who dates me. Um, this poem is called Why I Don't Write Love Poems, and it starts off a quote from a smart man named Charles Macleese called, he says, people are no damn good and men are worse. <clears throat> I have come to the conclusion that I am not made for love, that feelings are just tightly wound compasses trying to make it home after a long night. Romance is a store brand laundry detergent we use to wash away our naive. Why do we love love? Love clearly hates us. I don't trust men who know my middle name. I don't trust men who can charm my father or drink like him either. I don't trust men who smile too big, whose best traits are all physical. I don't trust pretty boys with nice eyes. I don't trust guys who ask, if you can't have children, why do I need to wear a condom? Well, first, you need to leave me with a mouth of rusty nails and a clinic phone number. One led me to believe that I can save fish from drowning. That man gave me a hammer and told me to fix my own problems. White boy called me intimidating, too much. Lover, not the same shade as me, reassures his mother I was just a friend. Boy told me we work out because he didn't want children either, because he made sure to call me a dead end before he left. There is a pattern. I love like my body. Barren. Now, men who say I'm too strong need to be men about it. I mean, handle your shit. Make more eye contact. Speak more loudly and clearly when you are walking away from me. I will use this as experience to hold it against the next pretty sucker who marches his pretty little face my way. Pray for him, clipbirds. Let's hope out this one gets out alive. Alert the others that I lust like war. I know how to snap necks, swallow nails, and flirt like Medusa. Be forewarned, I am a man-eater who is developing serious hunger pains. I do not need to say or believe a thing. I, you are no blacksmith. You are no lumberjack. Everything you leave is made out of sugar. This will all crumble with one lick. Maybe it's my fault I wear tap shoes to bed. I like a good entrance and I hate silence. I have a soft spot for hip bones and I love with escape in mind. Maybe it's my fault that I care with too many keys and that I stain every lover with rust because if I can't be beautiful, I make sure no one else around me is either. I'm not bitter, I'm just being a man about it. No kissing, not trapping myself into situations I can't charm my way out of. I take after my mother. I am also take after winter. I'm so cold. I promise to leave quiet this time. Just leave a sweaty palm print on your door handle. Boys, 
How can you not love a girl with a good exit strategy? Thank you. So, um, yeah, cue applause. Where's my cue cards? I need those. Um, so the thing I really love about poetry in particular is that it's just such a great way to express. Um, usually people always think that like with poetry it either needs to rhyme or needs to be this or that, when in all honesty, uh, it can be whatever you want. It really can truly come from anywhere of sense of inspiration. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about is this whole concept of digital versus analog. So me as a writer and me as like a poet, which is kind of a dying art, or like people are always like, oh, when they find out I'm a poet, they ask me like three questions. First one is, where can I read your stuff? Which is, I hate that question, because this is like before I like became published, I was like, you're just going to have to hear it at a poetry slam. Um, and then the second one is, why are you a poet? Which I don't think I need to explain, it just kind of happened. And then the third and final one is, so what do you do for money? Right? So I realize that that's like a really difficult thing to do. Like everyone, wants, let's be honest, we all want money. We all want to get paid for our art and everything, but it's a sacrifice that you make because you just love doing it. Um, so as a writer, I always am told that I'm like a crazy person because I have to physically write down every poem. Like I can't just type it. Um, I have a very, very severe and special uh, form of dyslexia where I can't see vowels like at all. Um, it's a very strange form of dyslexia that's very rare. So for me, when I write, it's kind of in this special language that no one else can really read because it's all chicken scratch and like there's no vowels in my words pretty much. Um, which I used to worry about. Like, so people are always like, why do you keep a diary? Like, what if you lose it? It's like, good luck trying to read it. You know, there's that episode of Doug. I don't know if anyone remembers that show, Doug, where Doug loses his journal and then his arch nemesis, Roger, finds it and he's worried that Roger's going to read it. And Roger gives it back to him and is like, it's chicken scratch. No one can read this. And it's like, oh man, that just made me feel so much better. Um, so for me, it's all about the concept that like, when you're stuck in a situation or like you find yourself in front of the computer, I always find myself procrastinating more. Like I find myself just so highly distracted by everything and anything. You know, all of a sudden I'm on Twitter, all of a sudden I'm on Facebook, all of a sudden, you know, I'm Googling myself, whatever, you know. But like when you have a piece of paper, you just kind of forget how epically organic that is to literally see the word on the page just pressed and archived for your own personal advantage. And I realize in this day and age, why keep a journal if no one's going to read it? But that's the thing, is you need to keep a journal because no one's going to read it. I know this is like the generation where you literally put up like, I just had the best tuna fish sandwich ever on Twitter, right? But not everyone needs to know that. I'm sorry, that stuff always bothers me. Um, you need to tell people, I'm doing a talk at Google. That's the stuff they like on Facebook. Um, but so my whole thing is that you have to go back to the page. Um, it's really difficult and really hard. And then as a poet, you go back to the page, and then you kind of bring it back to the stage. That was so cheesy, but really epic. Um, so with that, I'll give you another poem. See, I got all nervous, and then I'm going to do a poem, and then I'm not going to be nervous anymore. It's going to be great. This is a good choice of an outfit. I went through like three different choices today, and I just think this one's really epic and awesome. Uniqlo, you should do my wardrobe. That was a really bad shout out of Swans. Anyway, OK, here's a poem. <sighs> One in a million. That's how many people have your reading disability, Roseanne. One in a million. That's what the well-paid doctor told me. But don't worry, he said. You're not alone. Wait, hold up. One in a million and I'm not alone. That makes as much sense as this mumble jumble shit they call an alphabet. A-E-I-O-U and sometimes Y. See, I didn't know these letters were special and that these letters were going to make me special, but um, I can't recognize vowels. And those little perks like to play word games, up, down, left, right, vertical, across the page, like chess pieces in a never-ending board game. See, I don't know what you learned, but I learned E came before I. If it didn't, then they should have rearranged the alphabet as I, E, F, G, T, K, X, seven, four. Ah, screw it. You got me memorizing that thing like it's worth it. I think spelling all together is preposterous. Preposterous. P-O-S-T-E-Z-R-N. Preposterous. Okay, so maybe my spelling's a little off, but have you ever studied English spelling? I mean, take the word drunkenness. 
D-R-U-N-K-E-N-N-E-S-S. -S. A drunk came up with a spelling. I know this because A, there's not enough thought put into it, and B, there's too many N's, and while drunks never know when to end, there's an L in salmon. Why the hell is there an L in salmon? Now you got my ears rubbing riverbeds trying to hear that salmon, and all I'm doing is hitting walls, and all I gotta say for it is damn. A-E-I-O-U, and sometimes I ask myself, why? See, bullies used to hold books over my head yelling, spell it, Rose, spell it and you'll get it. I was put in exile from even going near a library. First, I blamed it on my pencil. It seemed to be holding everyone else's words just fine. I cursed each one I picked up, spelling it wrong again and again and again, until the paper was nothing but pink marks and my eraser had crumbled down like a watered-down tumbleweed. See, the brain is like a windowsill. Outside, stage left, there's an apple tree. Replace those apples with letters. And when someone approaches you and asks you to spell something, you can reach outside your window, grab the letters needed, and then look. You have the word predictable. Aren't you so smart? See, my window is a lot smaller and really dirty. And my apple tree is kind of dying and wilted in the distance. So when I do reach for letters, I bring up nothing but sawdust and paint chips. So do it. Prick me again with one of those insults and pour lemon juice in my wounds. I'll see me shrivel up like a slug used to torture on boring summer days. And when September comes, I am nothing but a ghost writer writing in invisible ink. See, my writing was fine. The spelling was being held against me. I had great placements for nouns, adverbs, and I can embrace a musical, elegant adjective with ease. I fill it with tears of the side and spelling bee. And this is my apology to anyone who says I can't be a poet because I don't know how to spell. Well, guess what? You're wrong. Because not only do I write, I also spit, and I spit nothing but fire, so call yourselves cremated. Yes, I do have my obstacles, A-E-I-O-U, and sometimes even Y. But as you can see, they haven't stopped me yet. Thank you. Woo! She goes off stage. Wait, I have props. I'm gonna like do a magic trick. I'm gonna like, can I come from the bottom? Oh, I can't come up. I was gonna try to come up. This is Pippo. Uh, he's famous. Oh man, he's drunk. He's a little drunk monkey. Uh, I got Pippo when I was three years old. Uh, him and I had the same birthday, which is Halloween. And he's like literally my most prized possession, which is so weird for most people. Um, but he's the man. He has to share a bed with me, um, and he's awesome. But the reason why I'm talking about Pippo is because, so this whole concept of going back to the notebook. So I always have a notebook with me, like everywhere I go. Every jacket of mine has a little tiny notebook in it and a pen. Like I don't, I can't be somewhere if I can't write. You know, you see artists all the time that like, you know, they, um, <clears throat> they're doing imprints or drawing or whatever on a napkin or like the back of a ticket stub. I'm that way. I literally have millions and millions of these notebooks and most notebooks are represent about six months and then I move on to the next one and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things that I basically wanted to have this talk about is that like when you're stuck in a situation that's like extremely difficult with um, dealing with life it's always good to go back to the page and writing it out and one of my favorite things to do is write out uh, lists. So I'm going to read you guys some of my lists from my notebook which is kind of like not my point, because my point is to keep it in the notebook, but like, let's just pretend you guys are in my bedroom and I practiced this Google talk in my bedroom like one too many times, he had to listen to it, so. Um, so these are things that I believe to be true, okay? Pigeons don't die. Has anyone seen a baby pigeon? Exactly, they don't die. Pigeons are like, been here since like the beginning, okay? Um, I also believe that I was gonna marry Sam Cooke then I found out he died, and then I was told my mom was going to marry my dad, and my mom was like, good luck with that. So that's bad. I think spelling is stupid. Um, the best moments are never caught on film. I met Dave Chappelle once. No one believes me because I didn't Instagram it. Um, I think Clueless and Mean Girls are the funniest movies, like, ever. You cannot debate me on that. Like, I'm sorry. I've had many arguments with friends being like, no. Clueless and Mean Girls, done. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Is today Wednesday? No, it's not. Okay, never mind. Um, I also think that Beyonce is a unicorn. Okay, she's amazing. I also believe that writing things down is better than typing them out. 
I also believe that the power of good art and the power of bad art. Um, here's my bucket list. First of all, I hate the word bucket list. It just sounds so stupid and dirty. Like bucket is just a dirty word to me. So this is my to-do list, which sounds even dirtier now that you say it, like to-do. Anyways, um, so this is what I want to do. My to-do list. I would like to move out of my roommate's house. Uh, fun fact, since I am a poet, uh, I live with this elderly couple. They're great. Um, I call them mom and dad. Uh, they're nice. They're not freaked out that I call them mom and dad because I've been calling them that my whole life. Anyways, okay. I would like to write a screenplay. I would also like to find out what Bill Murray says at the end of Lost in, Translati Lost in Translation to Scarlett Johansson. I would like to find the perfect voice for Pippo, like I want to do like a lifetime like web series of just my life because I think I'm cool enough. And Pippo needs a voice, but I don't know what he sounds like, so I'm up for suggestions. You can look at him and examine him. I think British, but I'm Irish, so why are you British? I don't know. So if you can think of a name for him. I actually want to listen to Dr. Dre's Detox. I don't know if it's like Beyonce, it's a unicorn. I don't know if it's actually going to come out. Um, I want to befriend a girl named Becky really badly. Um, so I can be like, Becky, look at her butt. Um, I also want to find a baby pigeon. Uh, I want to be on SNL. Okay, so here's my SNL moment, you guys. Okay, I'm going to use this Google talk. Lauren Michaels, if you're out there, or Maya Rudolph, okay, I really want to be on SNL. Like, it's kind of disgusting how badly I want to be on this show. So I realize in my SNL, like, working things out, there are two types of people on SNL. This all has to do with something, okay? I promise this will have a good conclusion at the end, I hope. Anyways, two things about SNL, people. You're either a character person where you kind of make up new characters like the Target Lady or Debbie Downer or all that, or you're someone who does impressions. I don't think I can do impressions, but I have two impressions, okay? Can I test them out for you on you guys? Can I? Okay, there are people in this audience, I promise, YouTube. Okay, so here's my two impressions, okay? So, Obama. I'm going to get here. Sasha, Malia, go to bed. Okay, now here's my Yogi Bear impression. Sasha, Malia, go to bed. <laughs> They're the same person. Anyways, okay. Sorry, that was my SNL moment. Anyways, um, also moving on. So basically everything, I'm working on like nine different projects right now uh, that have nothing to do with my art, which really bums me out and really makes me sad because I actually have to do things that uh, will pay my non-rent to my non-roommates. Um, so, but every time I make a list, I always feel like I'm writing, that I'm an actual writer, that I'm actually doing something that matters because it impresses myself and it impresses Pippo and at the end of the day, it makes me happy. Um, so one of the last lists I wrote is things I hate, uh, dentists, bananas, snow, Split sinks, you know, when they have like one faucet for hot water and one faucet for cold water. I hate that. Which one do you use? Um, being told that I'm too much, too passionate, too turned up, or too excited. I hate flying. I hate how easily stressed I get. I hate how no one experiences paper cuts anymore because in this digital age, no one reads books that often. You know what I mean? It's always on something. This is the generation. Actually, you know what? That's actually a good thing. Why do I? Why am I hating off the paper? No one wants paper clips. I think Google saved the paper clip. If you think about it, the paper cut. I mean, like you don't get paper cuts anymore. You just Google search things. Anyways, um, and I also hate buffering on like Hulu videos. Can someone fix that? No one. Okay, never mind. Anyways, um, so basically my point is just that when everything comes down to it, the paper and the pen are literally the most mightiest things in the world. You know, like I'm in this really weird purgatory stage in my life where I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Like I can't even believe that I'm here right now. But I think it just has to do with like, you know, I literally write letters to the universe and then I just kind of press it together in my notebook and hope that someday someone reads it, if not in the cosmos or whatever. So it's just like, go back to actual writing. I mean, picking up a pen is such a heavy act, but it does so much. Um, so yeah, now I'm nervous again, so I'm going to do another poem. This is easy. D rappers don't really talk between their songs, do they? They just kind of go into the next song. They're horrible public speakers. I think rappers are horrible public speakers. That's a secret. But then again, I want to be a rapper. I already have like four rap names. Rose Gold. 
Rosetta Stone and Rose Bowl, which is like if I ever become like a high rapper, but I don't smoke weed, so never mind. Anyways, um, more poems. <sighs> James Brown steps on stage. He is carved from midnight's marble. He turns to his right-hand man, Clive, funky drummer Stablefield, and says, Kick a little something, Clyde! Clyde, bursting from his love and joy, all that is rhythm and blues, beats the drums with such ease, like God told him to play, like he was God playing the drums. The sound that came out was pure cold sweat. Its flesh ran naked around the arena, a classic in the making. The record skips, the record skips, the record skips a few years and hip hop shows up late, but looks good. Does not make eye contact with anyone in the room, afraid someone might notice, um, excuse me, they're not from around these parts. See, hip hop was given all the hand-me-downs, but learned to put swag back in their stitches, took what's not theirs and made it their own. See, everything was fine until someone noticed the similarities of once was. Hip hop. You kicked a little too much dust off those records, even no Midas knows the price you gotta pay for the touch. These samples are not free. I would worry if I were you, Mr. Bismarcky. In 2004, Brian Burton took the Jay-Z Black album and the Beatles White album and made the Grey album. EMI record companies, all of a sudden feeling very cheated, decides to sue this nobody for all that he's worth. This plan backfires, and they pull this lover, this fan of pure music into the limelight for all to love and admire. The Beatles, angry by all that has been taken from them, have a song called Revolution 9, which is nine minutes of remix, 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 mastered in sounds. Andy Warhol can paint someone else's photos and call it art. He even took a soup can to stop himself from being a starving artist. Shakespeare took the framework of a tragic Italian love story and slapped his name on it. Disney had the audacity to take your love's fairy tales, add some colors, reanimate them, and walk to the bank because, well, this generation knows the best artists do not copy. They steal. And history is nothing more than a 12-year-old boy with a serious stuttering problem who's been told one too many times to learn from your mistakes. It is one thing to pull from your inspiration, it is another thing to be the man's tracing paper. As poets, as writers, no, as, no, as humans. As humans, we sample all the time. Sample like rib cage. Advice your grandmother once gave you or the weight of Atlas. Nothing is holy, nothing is sacred. However, she be recognized, respected, and thanked. This evening, Clive Funky Drummer Stablefield is doing me an honor of playing my outro, a sample of all my favorite Kanye West, oops, sorry, pardon me, Frankenstein tunes. Clyde, whose own original sound has been copied on a hundred different songs, has yet to see a penny. But for the record, he wants nothing in return but a simple thank you. Woo! Shake that monkey. That was inappropriate. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah. Uh, being a writer. It's fun. It's interesting. Um, it's been a very interesting process, especially with becoming a teaching artist. Uh, I was horrible in school. I absolutely hated school. It was really difficult for me because... Um, you know, I had a reading disability and, you know, I was, instead of trying to, like, actually have someone to pull me aside and, like, explain to me what happened, they just threw me in special ed and were just like, we're going to just, you know, she sings or swims, pretty much. Um, so I've been going back into schools and trying to help people realize that, you know, everyone's special and everyone's unique in their own way. And, and one of the writing exercises that I do with my kids, uh, first off, is I tell them to write a pinky list. And a pinky list is a list of things that make you... Uh, different than the next person. Uh, so for instance, on my pinky list, I would say like, I'm born on Halloween, I have a fear of bananas, um, my socks never match, uh, and just all the weird stuff. There's so many, why can't I think of a single weird thing about me right now? But yeah, so basically, um, one of the things I do is I do a pinky list, which is a great writing exercise. 
I love lists. I think that they literally break down any situation or any problem you have or face in everyday life. Um, and I guess in this whole thing that I want you guys to walk away with is to just write, journal out everything. Um, and just to basically just leave it on the page. I mean, I can't stress that enough. It's just so epically awesome and it's really hard uh, to not, just leave it in your head, it just hurts. It really does. You just have to put it on the page and figure it out. I also would uh, like to give you guys some writing prompts um, because I'm big on that. So one of them is to make a pinky list. You guys have homework and you're gonna have to submit it to me on Twitter. Um, and 140 characters or less. Uh, so one of the ones that I have is uh, the pinky list. Um, another one that I have, uh, one of my favorite uh, writing prompts that I do with uh, my high school kids is things my ex would have said. They love that one. I don't know why, but kids, are they love the anti-love poems, like, screw you, Dante, or whatever. Anyways, um, then the other one is tell me about the ride home. Uh, which is actually, I kind of stole that from a famous uh, hero of mine, Seamus Haney, RIP. Uh, and so, yeah, that's uh, some writing prompts that you guys can go with. So I'm going to do one more poem, and then you guys are free to go back to your awesome Google-ness. Um, by the way, I have a question about Google. When you are, like, on the interweb, are you Googleable? Like, I tell people this all the time, like, oh, they're like, where can I find you? And I'm like, oh, I'm Googleable. That's not a good word. You guys got to think of something else to, like, think of, okay? Google, oh, Google me. That's stupid. Why didn't I just think of that? Someone make a hashtag of Google me. Anyways, um, okay. That was a dumb question. Okay, this is it. I'm going to take up a lot of space. So thank you for coming. This is a huge honor uh, and not as scary as I thought it was going to be. This has been fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If not, lie to me, okay? Thanks. <clears throat> What is the first line of this poem? See, this is the other thing about poetry. It does not need to be perfect and crafted and sound like you went to college to write it, because uh, I didn't go to college. Uh, school of hard knocks. Anyways, OK. I should do a football tag. What do they do? They say their name in whatever school they went to. I'm going to do them. Rose Mackley, school of hard knocks. Seahawks. Anyways, OK. I shouldn't say that. We're in San Francisco. Anyways, not San Francisco. We're safe in this area. Google's safe. Seahawk fans here? Any? Yay! There's like two of you guys. Okay. Um, so this is the last, the last poem. <clears throat> With a face more judgmental than a Rorschach, he says, that's funny. You don't dance like a white girl. Now, before I can reply to his ignorant comment, my beloved drunk friend reassures him, well, that's because Rose is a unicorn. Shut, 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 shut. Where are my shoes? I do not spill drinks when I dance because, well, I don't drink. And also, I need my hands always to be free. I do not chase boys. I run in place. I am a tall glass of water that likes to get loose limb like liquid. Give me your marble. Give me your hardwood. Give me your bar top, even roof of moving vehicle to truly tell you why my feet met floor a long time ago and I dare not separate the three of them. I don't even need music to dance because that way I can never be off beat. In middle school, I was an awkward bag of bones and untalented ticks. Some might say a skinny excuse is spastic. My friends used to threaten me by saying, Rose, if you can't dance, we can't be friends. This scared me straight, but not straight enough I couldn't learn how to bend. Since then, I have been sweating for reasons unknown to the masses, and it's because my body thinks the rapture is coming, and I need to produce enough holy water to save me and my dance partner. People, on average, usually notice three things about me. One. She talks a lot. And if she's not talking, I'm smiling. And if I'm not smiling, I'm dancing. And for me, dancing is just my way of smiling through a conversation. We don't even need to talk to get along, just a heavy amount of body language. And everyone is fluent in that. If you don't believe me, well, hey. One of us is lying and it isn't me because, well, I don't take anything lying down. Baby, I can make my hips tick faster than any maternal clock. I can make your head ring like a jewelry store. Ayo, hey, yo, yo.
You hungry? Try my salsa may cause your girlfriend a serious heartburn. I am a party baby. I will make you cry and like it. I'm also a natural born ham. That's why I'm cutting this rug like a butcher. Now, I have ballrooms in my belly and a funky ruckus in my armpits, but sometimes I'm not good with my words. So I have this face where like when I'm really embarrassed, like I'm kind of probably doing it right now, my face turns bright red, which is just so bad, it's like really obnoxious. And then I have this yoga position where I can put my foot in my mouth, but my spine thinks otherwise. The only time my body seems to align perfectly is when I'm on this very stage. And the only time I've ever allowed myself to feel beautiful is when I'm dancing. We make gods when we dance, but dancing has never been a god, so there's no need for your judgment day. You better rock, span, spit, strape your dress form however you please. Everyone was meant to move like this. Now, the ignorant inkblot of a man at the bar is now lost for words. I begin to turn away to dance this moment off. He stops me and asks if he can join. And I said, oh, sweetie, that's cute. Um, but I think it's best that you just sit back, you know, relax, turn my body into a hashtag, tweet about this for your safety, and I'll truly show you how a unicorn human being breaks it down. Thanks, guys. Woo! We out of here, Pippo. Oh, we're gonna take questions? Oh, I didn't know it was that. Does anyone want questions? This is cool. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Pippo, someone suggested that Pippo should be a Canadian accent. How do you feel about that? Russian. Or Russian. He could be Russian. I have this theory. I wrote a list once. I was working at, I do social media as a form of like uh, uh, payment sometimes, which is so funny. I get paid to tweet. And uh, one of the lists I came up with because I like was so fresh over the job was things Pippo is famous for. He's a famous jewel thief. He is actually the original member in the Beatles. Um, he is also uh, what Sherlock Holmes was based on. He is Watson and Sherlock. And yeah, he's a pretty great guy. He used to have these red overalls, but I lost them in a movie theater. I lost them watching the movie Beethoven, if anyone remembers that with the dog. His hands also Velcro, um, but he's getting old. Oh, sorry. He's fine, but yeah. Look, he's so, oh, he's so regal. Anyway. Oh my god, we have a question! Uh, yeah, I have two questions. Okay. Um, one is, uh, what grades do you teach? Oh, okay. Um, mostly high school. I don't really do well in middle schools, because I feel like I didn't do well in middle school. <laughs> I had a lot of fun in high school. Um, fun fact, the man who introduced me, Nathan, we went to middle school and high school together. We were both nominated most school spirited. <laughs> Um, so that was kind of me in high school, is I was just this weirdo. So I teach um, ninth through 12th grade. But I really love teaching freshmen, because they just seem the most awkwardest. And if you can't tell, I'm like, I'm like a jellyfish caught in like a blender. I don't know what to do with myself half the time. Have you have an interview question? We have an interview question. Yeah? Wait, the oh my god, okay, so I did research on you guys by watching this movie called The Internship. <laughs> Right, and they have the Google. Here's the thing, when they asked the question about the blender, the immediate thing I thought of was the blender will eventually die. So you just chill out. And that's exactly what they do in the movie. So where's my internship, Google? Like, I answered the question. I bet Pippo's probably gonna get um, a job offer and not me. Whatever, he's talking smack right now. Um, anyways, but yeah. What, what other questions do they ask you at Google for an interview? Is it just that the only hypothetical one? I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the head our H department department. I'm gonna come up with some weird questions for you guys. Like, what reality show would you try out for? Which Kardashian do you think is your spirit animal? <laughs> um, things like that, which I think tell a lot about a person. Like, I'm a Chloe. Makes sense. Anyways. All right. I'll ask my second question then. Yeah. Um, if I can remember it. No, no. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, with your uh, reading disability, how do you go from a chicken scratch to a book? So thank God. Oh, my God. I have a great editor um, who's also my roommate. Oh, my mother. I loved Kathy Kane. 
Uh, anyways, but yeah, no, I had a really great editor. And my publisher, so a funny thing about my book is that I made a paper copy of my book and I hid them in bookstores. Uh, and my publisher stumbled across it and was like, wow, this is really cool. Like, um, I actually know this girl and this publisher was actually a family friend of mine and she was like, I didn't know you wanted to publish a book, so let's publish a book. So literally it's lots of editors and things like that. And like I do um, a lot of exercises and stuff that have helped me with my disability. Like it used to be way worse. Like in fifth grade I had the reading level of like a kindergartner. Um, now I have like the reading level of a fifth grader, so it's great. <laughs> I love those Lemony Snicket bookets, man. They really understand me. So they have really big words in that book. But, um, but yeah, now I just have an editor. And as much as I hate writing on a computer, spell check is, is a lot of fun. But if you're dyslexic, you, there's a lot of loopholes. Like I can write the word I when I really mean like myself. Like I can write this I, but I mean this I. And spell check won't correct it. There needs to be a grammar check. Especially on Twitter. Anyway, sorry. The your and your, oh, I hate that. Or there and there. <sighs> Remember DOL? They don't teach that in schools anymore. Anyways, is that it? Am I good to, am I, do you have a question? Yeah, so you're totally happy for your spelling to be corrected. You don't feel like that it loses something besides? No, I don't, I don't really mind when people correct my spelling. Uh, I bet my friends and my like family and friends and my boyfriend can tell you I do these idiosyncrasies or something. Like I, I also have a mush mouth, so I grew up with an Irish father where I had like an accent when I was little, and because of that, I feel like I can't say certain words correctly, which just on top of a reading disability just makes me like a really great comic strip. Um, but I don't have an issue with people correcting me with spelling. Uh, I kind of have more of an issue when people correct my like when I pronounce things wrong. Like, what's that word I said? Potent, potent. But it's just potent for some reason. I want the word to be potent or upstairs. Instead of upstairs, I can't say that. Yeah, there's a lot of weird things I say wrong, like fashishish. Uh, that's not the word. Uh, I have real trouble with speaking. English is hard. Garage. I say that, like a par parking garage. That's really hard. Or the letter before I in the alphabet is H. It will always be H. Um, but there are ones that I like got rid of. That's a good, let's see, I like that one. Um, but I, I used to make fun of my dad and family for saying privacy instead of privacy, but I say it sometimes, and that one's just ugly. So you can correct me on that one. But no, I have no issue with people correcting my spelling. Do it, please. It's bad. Anyway, so. Like, why is there a D in Wednesday? Okay, sorry, I'm done. We should leave. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>